Good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning Beers. We get ready to kick off one of the biggest weeks of the year at Fort Street Brewery Harvest Fest. We're going to tell you a little bit about that, but let's uh, first talk about the beer of the week this week. Uh, we picked something that we can't remember where we got it at. It was either uh, Wisconsin or Ohio. Mm -hmm. Definitely not available around here for sure. Mm -hmm. But we were certainly intrigued by the uh, the bottle, shape of the bottle, very mm -hmm. cool shape of the bottle, and also the label. It's sort of this, looks like um, somebody, it, it has the, uh, either somebody has a really awful cheap printer and they did this in their basement at home, or sort of a, kind of a sophisticated, this bottle's aged for a long time look to it. Kind of artisanal. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what really uh, caught my eye about it. Um, and then it's sort of the uh, translation of it, too. This was uh, from Bayerisch Bahnhof in Leipzig, Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, Holzbach, the name of it, but the Oak Storaged Bach beer, that lost in translation thing. Um, so let's check it out. Uh, we obviously uh, have done a few takes and drank a little bit of it already, as you can see. Some, some missing there. It is a hazy copper color. Got a really nice caramely, malty aroma to it. And our studio audience looks very intrigued. Mm -hmm. We'd love to taste. He is curious about it. <laughs> he wants to know if there's catnip in it. We have a studio audience yep. today. He wants to know if there's catnip in it. <laughs> it is uh, malty, uh, but not sweet because the oak has that, it's that really drying character in there. It's not uh, bourbon barrel aged or anything like that. It's just plain oak, uh, which really, you know, adds to the complexity, but really. Like woody, like wine. Oak, yeah, like that kind to kind of a dry, like a Merlot, it dries, uh, yeah. really dries it out, and it cuts that maltiness, and it kind of goes good. I would say there's probably a lot of Munich malt in here, which has a little bit of a nutty character, and it complements that. Um, a little bit of the caramely character cuts, somewhat, good somewhat rich, somewhat rich. A lot of things this would go good with food-wise. Uh, nothing, probably nothing too light, not so much with uh, lighter fish, maybe like a salmon. Definitely any kind of a, an Oktoberfest type of food, sausages and whatnot. Yeah, I'm um, thinking probably meat, I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of different, uh, definitely a lot of different sausages. Mm -hmm. uh, and a more rich fish like a salmon, I think it would go well with that too. maybe like steak Very nice uh, flavor, very smooth. Really, really easy drinking. It's a shame, I don't know if we mentioned that that was $15, mm. uh, because it's the kind of beer that you could drink a lot of. Um, I, I like it. Really easy drinking, flavorful. Um, and I like the wittiness of it. Too. Smooth. Just a really nice beer, and like, and like Tracy said, a very good food beer. Mm -hmm. So, thumbs up on this. Uh, if you happen to go anywhere where you see it, I would say check it out. Nice beer. All right, let's talk about uh, Harvest Fest this week, as uh, we have done this, uh, I believe, every year that Fort Street Brewery has been open. And what it is, what it was meant to be, is kind of a celebration of the fall harvest, which Michigan is one of the biggest agricultural states in the country. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of things that people don't even realize that are really big, uh, that Michigan is a big producer of. Um, that you would not necessarily even know. Uh, for instance, beans. You know, Michigan is the largest producer of dry beans in the world. Uh, and you, you know, mo how, how many people know that outside of the bean farmers? And it's potatoes you know? too. Uh, potatoes. Well, we're we're up there in potatoes. You know, we're not uh, we're not number one. No, like we are we in beans. Do do a lot of potatoes. We're up there. Uh, asparagus is another thing. I mean, we're number three in the nation in asparagus. Who, you know, how many people know that? Uh, and then just a lot of everyday things, so, you know, obviously apples, you know, about apples and maple syrup and, and fish, yeah, cherries, fish, obviously those things there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, not just um, the fall harvest, you know, but also uh, things that are kind of big to Michigan. So it, it kind of started off as uh, beers that would tie into that and certainly foods related to the fall harvest. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of played with the dates on it because... You know, I wanted it originally to coincide with the first day of fall, but that doesn't always coincide so well with the crops uh, as they're harvested. Certainly not pumpkin beers. I mean, you can do a pumpkin beer. You could do a pumpkin beer in July uh, because most people aren't really using pumpkin, so, mm -hmm. y you know, that's fine for them. But if you're really using pumpkin like we do, you're not getting pumpkins in July. 
you know, mm -mm. unless maybe there's some kind of a Chinese pumpkin or something like that. that uh, or a Siamese pumpkin. Uh, it could be. It's <laughs> a, uh, rare appearance by Finnegan. First appearance ever on the show yeah, from uh, Finnegan yeah. there. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, I don't know, maybe pumpkins grow uh, on the other side of the world at a different time. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. people that are doing pumpkin beers in July, maybe that's where they get the mm -hmm. pumpkins. But at any rate, so uh, I think this time of the year works, works really well for a lot of the stuff. Certainly for the beer ingredients. Uh, the hops are ready, uh, you know, fresh crops of grains, uh, the pumpkins, uh, the apples, all of those kinds of things. So uh, what we have, uh, the food menu, of course, obviously we had to really scale down because we're just, uh, it's that tremendous uh, labor shortage and just... Um, just uh, kind of struggling with the food part of it. So uh, much simpler uh, food menu this year. But I think uh, there'll be some things that you'll be interested in for sure. Uh, but the beers, of course, always the star of the show. So we'll talk about the beers. Uh, for the beers, first of all, we have a, uh, it's called Backyard IPA. And that is literally almost in our backyard. Hops grown right here in Lincoln Park, right over there at John and Debbie's house. Um, a really nice, in two different versions of this beer, I did different yeasts. Slightly different uh, malt character to both of them. One that we're going to have at the Harvest Fest and one that we'll have next week at the Michigan Brewers Guild Fall Festival in Eastern Market. So hopefully you can try both of those. Then we have, uh, how cool is this, a rhubarb rye beer uh, with rhubarb that uh, was grown also right here in Lincoln Park. So, um, you know, the kind of the nuttiness of the rhubarb done with a Belgian yeast and then that real tart sourness of the rhubarb should be pretty uh, nice in a beer. Uh, we also have um, the third beer is a pumpkin beer but I thought it would really go uh, something interesting with the pumpkin beer for, for Harvest Fest and it's pumpkin hibiscus. Kind of mixing two uh, really popular things. You know pumpkin beers are one of the fastest and hottest growing segments in craft beer right now and then hibiscus is kind of that under the radar People that know about it, it's a pretty hot, you know, thing for beers. And every time we've done a hibiscus beer at Fort Street, it's been very popular. Well, so. They're always delicious. Yeah, so mix them together. Uh, the tartness of uh, the hibiscus and, uh, of course, the savory character of the pumpkin with a little light spicing in there should be very nice. Mm. And then, uh, and then an apple beer. Of course, Michigan being a great apple state, uh, how about taking? Uh, sort of imagine it like uh, mixing cider and beer together is basically what it is. And that is going to be a very nice beer. So so four beers. We're going to do one on Wednesday, two on Thursday, one on Friday. Um, they're all small batches, so you're not going to want to miss any of those days because they could be gone that day. Mm -hmm. uh, along with some tasty, but a simple a simple menu, but some tasty stuff mm -hmm. as well. Certainly some Spanish Brothers sausages ah. we'll have there. Everybody seems to love those so far. So... That's what's going on at Fourth Street Brewery this week. Still a lot to get ready for, so you know I probably better get uh, hurry enough and get into the brewery there. Uh, and the Tigers, big thing, uh, all you know uh, in the sports world. The Tigers uh, trying to get to the World Series. Game number two is today, so come on out and watch that and root on the Tigers and the Lions as well. No, so too. We'll yeah. see you uh, at the brewery today, and hopefully at least three more times Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. at Forestry Brewery. So, cheers everyone. Cheers. Have a great week.